as I'm talking about Micah, you're going to look at yourself and you may say, Pastor, that's what's going on today. A little background before we get into too much. God looked down on Israel. And at this time, it was split into Israel and Judah. And he saw all the wickedness go on from his own people, from his own children. And he had enough. My mom had some sayings, and I said this before, payday is not always on Friday. As I look through the book of Micah, I'm concerned about our day and age. In this country, and I am telling you, God is one day is going to say, I've had enough. When I got here, uh, I read a book that sometimes God needs to clean house. And I must have said it because James back there said, I'm going to put that on your grave, Brother David. I remember what you said, James. Sometimes there need to be, uh, if you will, a bowel movement to get rid of the wastes. God will do this in a church. He'll do it in a home. He'll do it in a community. He'll do it to a country. So he told Micah, and at this time, it was common for God to use a prophet, one in Judah and one for Israel. They should have never split in the first place. A uh, young man who became king, Solomon's son, decided to do things his way. And he's responsible for splitting Israel in half. After that, God would use a prophet for each Judah and Israel. When he uses Micah, he uses Micah for both of them. He just had enough with Israel and with Judah. I don't know how many parents are out there.
person. Don't be unevenly yoked. Your marriage is headed for trouble if you have two faiths in one home. It's not going to work. There's always people that try to say, well, I'm the exception. It will work with me. God doesn't know, but I'll help that person get saved. After they get married. And some of you may get offended and Listen, God, that's why we get in trouble. We don't do things the way God wants us to do them. And it's for our own. The reason Israel got the way they were is because they let other people in. They let other faiths marry their children. And it's not okay. The book of Micah was written during a time that God was just had enough. Had enough of their lifestyle. And it wasn't acceptable to their one true God, Yahweh. Both kingdoms were oppressive to their own citizens. Blatantly. In God's eyes, he saw that the rulers were blatantly taking advantage of their own citizens. Because they have enriched themselves and probably passed laws like some of our congressmen and say, well, it's legal because I passed this law. God does not want rulers to enrich themselves. We're supposed to help each other out. Just like when God said when there was going to be a king, he said, now when there's a king, they're not there to enrich themselves. They're there to serve me and to lead the people. God would instruct Micah to send a message of judgment in which he would allow them to be taken captive by another nation, but will give them a chance to repent of their sinful living. To understand the book of Micah is to understand what the name of Micah means. And I think it already showed on the slide. But what does Micah mean? Does anybody know? Who is like Jehovah? Who is like Jehovah? This means, as I studied this and I read this, did a couple research papers on this. God's going to intervene. Who is like Jehovah? Again, when God intervenes, it should be a good thing. But if you're not living right, it's not going to be such a good thing. But God's going to intervene. When he sees one of his children become dishonest, when he sees one of his children become corrupt, when he sees his own taking advantage of others, God will intervene. Read the book of Hebrews. Those that are saved. God will chastise his own. We know better. Dr. McGee would explain the theme of Micah is that of the condemned violence, corruption, robbery, covetousness, gross materialism, spiritual bankruptcy, and illicit sex. And as I'm saying this, you may think, this is America. And you may think to yourself, these things are happening in the very nation that we live now. And I'm here to tell you, God is not going to put up with it much longer. I heard it years ago, and this was years ago. Many a preacher said, if God lets America slide, he's going to have to say, I'm sorry, to Sodom and Gomorrah. And you all know as well as I do, that's not going to happen. Soon, if we don't repent and turn to God, we will face the judgment 
of God. Imagine yourself, you're living this time, that you're fearing any moment that your home, your fields could be overran by foreign countries. Again, as I'm saying this, you may think of the United States right now. You have looked to your rulers for protection, but they only oppressed you. The rich of the land extort you, and they extort the very few dollars that you have left to your own name. The hearts of the people are filled with wickedness, and people are going to be judged for their corruption that they have allowed to go on. Let me say that again. Do you know we allow things to go on? When someone from our own Senate stands up and says, God has no concern what goes on here. I'm telling you, I almost took a few steps back. I thought God was going to strike lightning right then and there. Don't you realize what you're saying? And people were reminding me, he said it, where the Ten Commandments are kept. I've never been to D.C. I would like to go there one day. But I was told that there's scripture written everywhere. And stitch in stone. And yet we have people that blatantly disobey the words of God. So in the book of Micah, imagine yourself during a time when you fear at any moment that a nation is going to overrun you. That the people that are supposed to protect you only oppress you. The rich extort you for the very few dollars that you have to your name. The hearts of people are filled with wickedness and corruption. And again, they have allowed this to go on. You read and you might understand the plan of Yahweh. You know that Yahweh will judge, and you want to stay faithful to be part of the remnant that will be restored. You know that God has promised a coming king who will deliver his people and restore the glory of his kingdom. You want to hear the truth of God rather than the false messages from the false prophets. Yahweh will exile Israel. Allow them to be taken captive because of their oppressive, dishonesty, depravity, idolatrous worship, and then restore the nation by establishing his righteous king. God will use Micah. You know, Micah is one of the few prophets that you don't hear about his lineage. And as I studied this, it is believed because he was just a common person. People thought he wasn't worthy of being recognized. But God did. God can use anyone that is willing. God would use Micah. Someone we don't hear about. We don't know about his family. Just a common person that's willing to serve God. God will exile Israel because of their oppressive dishonesty, their depravity. And one day he's going to establish his king. Right now I just got done with the Old Testament. I'm going into the New Testament. And the book of Matthew is all about the kingdom of God. And the people have been hearing that for centuries, and they thought that God was going to establish his kingdom there on earth. And that's not so. This earth is not God's kingdom. His kingdom is in heaven. But God would use Micah to spread the message of God's conviction, to convict the leaders, 
the people of Israel and encourage them. See, people think that God's doing this to be mean. God is doing this to wake them up. To give them a chance to make things right. You know, one thing about salvation, what you have to do, you have to deal with the fact that you're a sinner. If you don't realize you're a sinner, I believe you cannot be saved. And God is pointing out their sins. But you know as well as I do, people do not like that. How else is people, are people going to know if they don't know they're committing sin? But God's going to do this so that his word will encourage them to humble themselves under his judgment. You know, when I almost said I, but we, Paul and I, we corrected our children, not just for kicks. Well, maybe Fawn. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we corrected them to encourage them to live a better life. Yeah. Not to fall into the realms of sin. There were some hard punishments that we had to do. And in our hearts and our minds, it was the only way to show them what they were doing was wrong. And some people, well, I don't like being, listen, if your child is, well, I believe in corporate punishment. My daddy, my daddy before him, my daddy's daddy. And it was said about my mom and dad's family, and it said about Paul and I and our kids. I'm not here to boast, but we have heard repeatedly, your kids are different. What's your secret? Correcting them when they're wrong. We didn't like it. Listen, that broke our hearts. Joshua thought I was going on to Harmony, but Harmony was built differently than him. She wouldn't be able to handle a full swing from dad. But as God is doing this to the people of Israel, he's doing this to show them their ways are leading themselves to a road of destruction. And it's what he had to do to wake them up. You're a child of God. You know better. You're a child of God. You know that a, you don't need that extra money from someone that needs it. I'll provide for you. You don't need that extra thing when someone is starving. There are some people like that today that will willingly take, even though they have something, willingly take somebody else's only thing just because they have the power to do so. And it's not right. But God will exile Israel because of their dishonesty, their depravity, their idolatrous worship. And then he'll restore his, this nation by establishing his king. That was the introduction. The message of Micah, Yahweh would devastate Israel because of their sinful lifestyle. God sees the people living in a wicked way and has put their own nation on a road of destruction. God intervenes. If he doesn't, he knows your life is going to be wrecked. 
the time that God intervened in my life was the best thing for me. To have a relationship with God in your life is the best thing that you'll ever have for you. Now, God, if you're saved, he is your heavenly father. And he will correct you if you're his. And he sees that the wicked ways are going to put their own nation into destruction. Those that commit sin, I cannot emphasize enough. You're not just affecting your own life. You're affecting the lives of others. Thorn S. Rainer said this. God speaks because he wants to know why the Jews do not see the decline. Why can't you see this? You ever done that with your own child? Don't you know if you keep doing that, what's going to happen? I can't be the only one. Years ago, I have two brothers. My oldest brother kind of showed off a little bit. And our dad told us to take some limbs off some trees. He went up as high as he could, start sawing away. And my brother Matt and I looked at him and said, stop what you're doing. More or less, he told us to shut up, mind our own business. He was sawing while he was on the other side of the limb that he's sawing. And thank God for our neighbor's garage that broke his fall. And some people are like that with God. I know what I'm doing. On the wrong side of the fence, on the wrong side of God, just going away. I know what I'm doing. Just let me be. And you create your own destruction. Rainer again explains today's church is on decline. Allowing sinful things to creep in that will lead to decline just as the people did in the Old Testament. And it's sad to say I'm seeing things of dear people that I love. Allowing things into their church knowing it's going to be the leading thing that's going to disrupt them. Leave me alone. I know what I'm doing. Leave me alone. I know what I'm doing. I know best. It's just one thing. I don't know how many times I've heard that in my lifetime. Just did it one time. But the sad part is what he points out, the people don't even realize of their wickedness that's going on. That is why God must bring it to our attention. Some of us are so involved in sin, we don't even realize we're in sin. And God has to bring it to our attention. Just as he did in Micah. Micah 1, verses 3 and 5. For behold, the Lord cometh forth out of his place, and it will come down and tread upon the places of the earth. And of the mountains shall be molten under him. And the valley shall be cleft as wax before the fire. And as the waters that are poured down to steep place. For the transgression of Jacob is all this. And for the sins of the house of Israel. What is the transgression of Jacob? Is it not Samaria? And what are the high places of Judah? Are they not Jerusalem? Again, sarcasm and rhetorical questions. More or less, when, when Mike is given this message of God, he's telling them in a way you ought to know why he's doing this. If you're ever disciplining your child, you ought to know why you're disciplining them. We kind of had a rule in our house. After we disciplined our kids, we let us cool off, and they cooled off for about a half hour. And we'd go in the room and talk to them. 
there are some times that I forgot as a dad that they may not know why they were even being disciplined. I see it, but they may not. That's what's going on in Israel right now. They're so far into sin. They don't even know what they're doing wrong is wrong. There are some things in this country that are going on that's wrong, but some people don't even know what's wrong. And God will point it out. And as a parent, you ought to point it out to your children. This is why I'm doing this. I don't want to see this happen in the future. I'll say this, and I'll close on this part. But I said this before. I remember as a child having a preacher say, years ago, at seven years old, I understood. And the preacher got on the preacher, and he just, let, man, he was letting it fly. And he looked in the TV screen, and, man, I thought he was looking at me. Talking about parents, but I thought it was me. In plain as day, he said, there is trouble in the home. If a child has to ask their parents, are we going to church today? I am telling you that stuck with me as a child. And I said to myself, man, if I ever become a father, We ain't missing church. Amen. If someone in your household has to ask, Mom, Dad, are we going to church? That's a sign of trouble in your home. Your children shouldn't have to ask, Are we going to church today? It should be expected from a child of God. As we close, uh, Brother Derek's going to come up and take some prayer requests. But I just want to say in closing, if you're living in sin and you think you're getting away with it, you're not. One day God's going to judge. If not here on earth, then in the afterlife. And if you're a child of God, if you think you're a child of God, and you're involved in sin, and you're not being chastised, something's wrong. I know my Heavenly Father pretty well. It's at the point that if I think about doing something wrong, i got to have an inkling of what my Heavenly Father is going to do. He's going to have an old conversation with Mr. Sears. If something goes on in the church, he's going to have a talk with Mr. Sears. Payday is not always on Friday. And I say this not only because it's a message from God, but there are so many things that are legalized that is sinful. People don't even realize it's sin. It's getting to the point that save people. Well, our ruler said it's okay. It must be okay. God is going to hold us all accountable. And I, I know I emphasize a lot on the family, but I, I'm telling you, I do it because Satan attacks the home like crazy. Mom, Dad, you are responsible of being Mom and Dad. And if children go astray because you haven't raised them in church, because you yourself haven't taken time, and there's going to be a lot of excuses, I know, and I think God may hear a few of those excuses, but I took them to church. I'm saying you, Mom and Dad, if you don't take the time to pray with your children, Take the time to open God's word. 
and they go astray, God will hold you accountable. Because you didn't teach them what was right and wrong. You didn't speak up when they were living in sin. And to look the other way. One day God's going to look us eye to eye. And there will be no excuses. And I'm telling you this because when you do things God's way, you will marvel over what he does. How he provides. Some of us, I, I'm starting to realize, if we don't trust God, we're telling God we don't trust him, and we tell him that he's not capable of doing what he said he's capable of doing. Our kids will look at us that way as mom and dad. Mom and dad don't even know what they're doing. How can I trust them? What is it you're doing? Are you in the word of God? And listen, times are going to start getting worse. And then through Micah and throughout the whole Old Testament and New Testament, there's always a remnant. There's always a following of God's people. God will always have a man. Even during tribulation period, there's going to be two witnesses. There will always be someone. Don't let things creep into your home. Oh, it's just this. You get so far gone, you start to realize, is this sin or isn't it sin? And if you have to ask, it probably is. But we're going to go through the rest of the book of Micah. Very interesting of what goes on. And God doesn't hold any favorites. He's going to go right down the line to the rulers, to the prophets, so-called prophets, to the people. And each person has an accountability. One of my beliefs is, and it's not in scripture, I really believe there are different degrees in hell. I just, it's in me. I can't prove it in scripture. It's only, I, I won't say it's scriptural. I just, it's something that I believe. I also believe there are different degrees of heaven. Where will you be? And always remember, if you're one of these people that's God's remnant, and, and you're, you're following him, and you think life's not fair, just remember what the Bible says. The last shall be first. And the first shall be last. Some of these people that have a golden spoon in their mouth, they may not see heaven at all. Mom had another saying, I'll close with this. There will be a lot of surprises in heaven. The people that you think aren't going to be there may be there. And there may be people there that don't think you're going to be there. Brother Derek, you take some prayer requests. Amen, brother. All right, guys. Anybody got any prayer requests tonight?